Hey everyone, Gil Gross here, post-match. Casper Ruud versus Jensen Brooksby, Australian Open 2023, round two. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video in three, two, one. Jensen Brooksby takes out the number two seed in four sets in a quarter of the draw, by the way which is looking really, really chaotic right about now. We have Rude out, Berrettini is out, and on my television screen right now is Taylor Fritz, who's down two sets to one against Alexi Popperin, and I haven't been watching, but looks a little injured to me at the moment. I will obviously go back and get up to speed on that one. But Jensen Brooksby, a guy who... I was so, so impressed with in the summer of 2021, expected pretty big things in 2022, expected those things incorrectly. Those things did not come. And finally, I kind of saw it again. I saw why Jensen Brooksby had me kind of infatuated with his game summer of 2021 because it is so unique and I find it pretty engaging to to watch because uh, uh, it truly is one of a kind. And he's beating opponents who generally have way better serves than him, hit bigger ground strokes, and a lot of the times are even quicker around the court. There are just other areas where Jensen Brooksby's quite magical, and that's where he makes up the difference. So that is all to say, good to see Jensen Brooksby back with a pretty spellbinding performance against Katz Barud. Where I want to start in the specifics of the match is Brooksby's tactical focus to make Rude hit backhands. I talked to him at the U.S. Open um, a couple years back, and this is one of the things he told me, is that he feels like, tactically, he is pretty much smarter than all of his peers. That he executes a game plan a lot better than most players on tour. And you can see... When he's playing shot in and shot out, every single shot has a purpose. He never loses sight of what he's trying to do. And in this case, what he was trying to do was just pin Root in his backhand corner and make him hit that two-hander over and over and over again. And he was able to do that extraordinarily well. Here's the stat. Casper Root in this match... Hit 467 backhands. He hit 300 forehands. 467 to 300. Rude hitting the backhand. Couple reasons for that. Um, one, I think Brooksby's defense and returning is incredible. He has an unbelievable penchant to get the re to get the the return. Uh, of serve deep into the rude backhand, which is obviously really hard to do. And from defensive positions, I think he has a real knack for finding the righty backhand and putting the ball deep in the court. Because if it's short, then you give you open up time for the runaround, which obviously Rude is going to be looking to do offensively. So that is the way that Brooksby kind of got out of defensive positions, which includes the return of serve and kind of got the point to neutral. So skilled at just getting to neutral. And then what was happening at neutral? At neutral, they were getting into that cross-court backhand exchange and Rude was not breaking the pattern. There's two ways he could have broken the pattern. He could have hit some good backhands down the line. That shot was MIA for Casper. I mean, there were flashes of it late in the third set, but for the most part, just wasn't there. The other thing he could have done which is what I would have told him if I were coaching him, is, hey, uh, you need to look for a chances to use your feet, run around that backhand, and try to crush the forehand. You can't run around and be passive because now you're just getting, you're just taking yourself out of position and you're going to get tired that way. But you got to run around and crush forehands. But instead, Rude was accepting backhands and just getting pinned in that corner, wasn't finding, wasn't able to find a way out, and it was Brooksby who was kind of lulling Casper to sleep by going there over and over and over and over again. And then he would be the one um, to, you know, 
unless Casper missed, because let me also paint a picture about the cross courts. Brooksby's backhand is more consistent. Brooksby's backhand gets better depth. Brooksby's backhand gets better angles. Now, all of these things are true, making it so that sometimes Brooksby would win in that backhand and backhand exchange straight up. Uh, but uh, Brooksby, who was, according to Hawkeye, going 80% cross court with his backhand, was also uh, creating a situation for himself where when he played his best offensive shot, which is his backhand down the line, Rude was so out of position and off balance and caught by surprise that the yield was unbelievable on the 13% of backhands where Rude went down the line. Yes, I know 80 plus 13 doesn't equal 100. The other percent percentage went down the middle. Coverage of the 2023 Australian Open is brought to you by BetUS. For this year's AO, play with America's favorite sports book and get $125 extra on your first deposit using the link in the description or the promo code GILL. Rude also fell into some bad habits in this match that helped out Jensen Brooksby. Bad habits that I've seen this entire year. Bad habits that led me to put Casper Rude on upset alert before this tournament even started. Casper Rude, in every match I've seen from him in 2023, has been the nail. He has not been the hammer. He's the one getting pushed around. Every single match. And it's evident in these winner statistics. I can't get them for United Cup, but I'll tell you what it was against Laszlo Gera. 18 winners for Gera, 10 for Rude. I'll tell you what it was in this match. 50 winners for Brooksby, 33 for Rude. Casper Rude's got bigger weapons than Jensen Brooksby and Laszlo Gera. Why is he hitting less winners? I'll tell you why. There are three reasons. First of all, he's not keeping his backhand out of harm's way. His backhand is bleeding into the middle of the court, short, attackable. The quality isn't there. He's not holding a good court position, uh, which would also help his backhand stay out of harm's way. If he could take a little time away on it, then he would have an easier time protecting it. But Rude is being pushed back very easily. He's not holding his position on the baseline, which I think you need to do on a low bouncing hard court. What about when he's defending? So now that he's kind of, you know, let's say he he hits a, a poor backhand and now he's pushed back and now he's on defense. What's he doing then? Well, he's slicing too much. He's slicing way too much on defense, which can prolong the point. You can extend rallies with slice defense and there's certainly a time and a place for slice defense, but do you know what you're not going to do? Slicing all of your defensive shots? You're never going to turn defense to offense that way. And that's just non-existent in Rude's game right now, which is an awful combination. If you are giving up ground and then you're not retaking that ground because of the way you're defending, that's a really bad combination. So Rude is getting dictated. It's a big problem. Um, now, what is the what is a possible explanation for this? Because this is not the way he got to three big hardcourt finals in 2022. Miami final, U.S. Open final, year-end championship final. This is not how we did it. So what's going on here? There's one explanation that I think I want to throw out there in, in fairness to Casper, which is that uh, there is a chance he's completely beat up and worn down at this time. He had a three-week off season. He has said he is going to take the entire month of February off. We will not see him again until the Sunshine Double. Unless, I don't know if there's an Acapulco situation going on or not. I don't know. Um, but he's going to take some time off here. Would he take time off if he wasn't feeling pooped? Maybe, but uh, probably not. So reading between the lines there, understanding that he had a very grueling 2022 and then had a three-week off season, it's, uh, it's possible that what we're seeing from, from Rude is a burnt-out athlete. It's possible. Just want to throw that out there. All right. Um, there was one positive about 
Rude in this match, and it's the it's the way he won the third set. To me, it was with his fitness. I was impressed with Casper Rude's cardio in this match. And what happened in this third set, as Brooksby was up five games to three and served for the match and had three match points, is they played a bunch of lung busting rallies, and ultimately, Brooksby's short term endurance failed him. He got really tired here, and uh, Brooksby can't really do what he wants to do if. Once he gets tired, because as you could imagine, going to Rude's backhand over and over and over again is not a way to finish points quickly. Like these are these are long points that they're playing, and Rude's lungs actually did hold up better than Brooksby's. There's a big reason why he won the third set. I mean, there was a point at Deuce where Brooksby won it. It was a lung buster, and then Brooksby had to drop to a knee after the point. Uh, then he almost won the match point afterwards, but Rude with some really good defensive skills to uh, neutralize the point. Then Brooksby hit an exhausted looking forehand. Uh, his serve got broken. Didn't look the same physically for the remainder of the third set. And now you're kind of ringing the alarm bells because Jensen Brooksby, big picture, demands a lot of himself physically. And I think it's probably at this time the biggest thing that will hold him back in his career. If nothing about his first serve changes, nothing about his net play changes, nothing about his ground game changes, uh, particularly his forehand, the biggest thing that's going to hold him back is how damn hard it is for him to win matches physically. And it was looking like that might be the undoing of him because it looked like he was starting to peter out in this third set. And now you're thinking, what's going to happen for the fourth and the fifth because Kasparud Ruud looks fresh and... It's looking like we might have a turnaround on our hands. Well, at this time, Casper Ruud goes to the bathroom to change and takes forever. He takes forever. I don't know how long it was exactly. But he took a long break. And uh, shout out to Robbie Koenig on the World Feed broadcast who brought this up. I don't know if that was the right move. I just don't. Because whether it be mentally resetting from losing three match points and blowing a 5-3 lead in the third set, but in my, in my opinion, of even more importance, physically recovering. Brooksby came out of the gates in the fourth set firing, and all of the advantages that existed for Jensen Brooksby in the first set and the second set, and then until 5-3 in the third set, just reemerged to start the fourth. And he was okay physically. And he picked up the victory. Brooksby beat Kasparud. Brooksby was so dominant from neutral in this match that he beat the number two seed, the number three player in the world, without a serve. Without a serve. He served terribly in this match. His first serve was awful, Jensen Brooksby. And, you know, Rude outserved him. Rude's going to outserve him every single time. But check this out. Check out these rally length stats, and I'll end it on this. Zero through four shot rallies, Rude won, 61 to 60. Five through eight shot rallies, Rude won, 41 to 34. Nine plus shot rallies, 55 to 25. In all my time looking at rally length statistics, I don't think I have ever seen a more impactful nine plus shot statistic where it was so lopsided and so frequent. I mean, if we get like a Novak Djokovic against Maxime Cressy match, we're going to see Novak win nine plus shots. Probably like, let's say it's a three set match. He probably wins it like 12 to three or something like that. Real lopsided. But while that's a blowout, you have less volume there. Here we have the double whammy for Brooksby. We have, in my opinion, mostly due to his returning and defense and consistency, we have him dragging out a massive percentage of points past nine shots. And we have him winning that massive percentage of points, nine shots and more. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.